Hey guys, Spike Mall here. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to install Team Learn Recovery Project on your LG G2 so that you can make backups, restore things, and be a little safer um, while you're testing all these new ROMs and stuff that are coming out. So, uh, there are a couple prerequisites. Uh, first off, if you're on Verizon and you have any plans to take the over the air update, go ahead and take it now. Um, Addendum, do not do that if you have already installed some sort of custom recovery. Um, basically, you cannot install OTAs after you have a custom recovery because that will really mess things up. The OTA tries to overwrite a lot of the stuff that the recovery has done, and it's just bad. So basically, the, the good path to take is, you know, brand new phone, take the OTA, go ahead and root it, and then install Team One Recovery Project. You want to do that last. And from then on, always think twice if another OTA comes out, you don't want to install that while that custom recovery is installed. Okay, so I got that out of the way. And really, so far, this only applies to Verizon because we're the only ones who have had a OTA update yet. Okay, so the, um, the other prerequisite is that you have to have ADB working. I'm not going to go over that in this video at all. Uh, suffice to say that you need the adb.exe, and you'll either need to put that in the same folder of all the files that you're pushing, or uh, in my case, I just threw it into C Windows System 32 so that I can run it from no matter where I'm at. I can just type in ADB and it'll work. Um, Okay, got that out of the way. So now the files you're going to need to download. Basically, there is a, a recovery image for each one of the different models of uh, the G2. Uh, a couple things to take note. There was a 2.6.3.1 version, and that had a bit of a problem with some boot loops still. Uh, apparently, there are still some potential problems with boot loops if you're using uh, hardware keys and or some stuff with a MISC partition. I honestly do not understand it, so... Uh, basically, just get the 2.6.3.2 versions if you can, and other than that, just for now, stay away from rebooting your phone using the hardware keys to get into recovery. Just use something like ADB Reboot Recovery or a program like, uh, I think it's just called Quick Boot uh, for Android on the Marketplace. We'll let you do that uh, cleanly as well, and then you won't get boot looped. Uh, okay, so anyway, you're going to go ahead and download the IMG file, uh, get the newest one that you can. As of writing, it was 2.6.3.2, so you just download that. I've already got it downloaded, so skip that. Uh, and then if you're following option number one, which I recommend, just because Loki is an awesome tool, kind of supports uh, DJ, DJ Bliss, who did most of the bootloader bypasses. Um, and it runs a couple safety checks before you uh, install the file, so it's a little safer in my opinion. Anyway, so you're just going to go ahead and download Loki from GitHub here, as it says in the link. And I, uh, I recommend just download the zip file. That'll come with everything. Save that. Um, I guess I'll show you where that's at in the file, because it's um, you don't need every file that's in this zip. You actually only need... Uh, well, okay, open up that zip file, go into the bin folder, and you just want to grab Loki Flash and drag that into whatever your working folder is going to be. I just made a folder called recovery that I'm using to do everything in. So you just drag that in there. We'll be pushing that to your phone later. Same with the uh, recovery image. Okay. Now, a couple things to note about getting ADB to work on here. I said I won't show you how to get ADB itself set up, but there are some things you have to do on the phone first to get it showing up on the computer. Um, first off, I recommend enabling developer options. Uh, just click your menu button, system settings, uh, go to general, and then you want to scroll all the way down to... Uh, you probably won't have the tab view if you're on Verizon. It'll look like this. Uh, anyway, you want to go to About Phone, Software Information, and then you want to tap on Build Number a bunch of times and so, until it says, Congratulations, you are now a developer. Uh, it's kind of a silly way for them to hide it, but that enables uh, these developer options here. Now, until you... Uh, this, this option, USB debugging, will be grayed out for you unless you happen to be connected to your computer with USB, and in the USB connection method, you have chosen Internet Connection Ethernet. Uh, there you go. And you can see when I did that, mine said USB debugging connected. Uh, you'll, you'll have to now check this checkbox, and then it'll show up. Uh, okay, so we got that out of the way. Now, when you're on your computer, you should be able to type ADB devices and actually see your phone listed there, the uh, serial number for it. Okay, so now we need to push these two files to our phone. So first I need to uh, move into this folder that these files are in. Um, the easy way to do that, if you're on Windows 7 or 8, uh, you can hold down Shift and right-click in this folder in the empty space and choose Open Command Window here, and that'll just put you right in that folder. Very handy. 
the other way would be copy this path, just click up in your address bar, copy that, and then come into your command prompt and type in cd space and then paste in that path and hit enter. Uh, either way, as long as you get to that folder, or you can type it in manually, whatever. Uh, okay, so now we just need to do adb push, and we're going to type in loki underscore flash. And the path then that we want to push that to on the phone, which is going to be data local slash tmp. Make sure you have the the uh, preceding slash on that. Oh, that's all that. Uh, slash tmp, and then you do have to type in the final name too, so loki underscore flash. Okay, so we're putting Loki Flash into data local temp Loki Flash. Enter. Okay, and that went over fine. Now you want to do ADB push uh, open. You can hit tab to complete the file name there. And then slash data slash local slash TMP slash open. And hit tab again to complete that file name. There we go. And it's taking a little while. There we go. And it pushed it. All right, so these files are now both residing on our phone under the data local temp folder. So now what we have to do is hop into a ADB shell, which will uh, open up a command, um, a terminal prompt or a bash prompt or whatever you want to call it from uh, from our phone itself. It's the same as running a command in the uh, uh, terminal emulator on your phone, which you actually could do this from that if you wanted to. Uh, but we're going to have ADB shell. Uh, all right. If if at first you don't have the uh, pound C, uh, the pound key like that, and you instead of a dollar sign, uh, you want to type in SU. That will give you the the pound sign. Uh, that just tells you that you have super user permissions, which you need for this. So, like I said, you have to already be rooted to do this. Um, okay. So we've done that. Oh, and if it's the first time that you've typed in SU through ADB shell, then you might get a prompt on your phone saying, do you want to allow this? So just keep an eye out for that and hit accept if you get it. And then you'll get to this prompt. Now we just want to do CD slash data slash local slash TMP. Okay. And now if you type in LS, which is list structure or list, I'm not sure, uh, you should see that Loki flash is on there and so is the open recovery image. So we're just about ready to flash, but first off, we have to tell uh, we have to tell this uh, system that uh, the Loki flash is a binary file that is uh, executable. Uh, so we're going to type in chmod and then 777, and then you just type in the name of the file, Loki underscore flash. And all that's doing is that's telling the system, hey, this is able to be executed. Uh, okay, so once we've done that, now we can actually go ahead and do the flashing. Uh, so just type in dot slash, that basically says execute this next file that I'm going to type in here. Type in Loki underscore flash space, and then you want to tell Loki flash that you're flashing your recovery, so recovery. And then we have to give it the uh, path to the actual file that we're going to pass, uh, pass blah, blah, that we're going to flash. Uh, so you want to type in slash data, you want to give it the full path here, I think. I don't know if it works with you know just the file name. Uh, so slash data, slash local, slash tmp, and now the annoying thing is you can't use tab completion, so you have to type out the whole name of this image file. If it doesn't find it, it just won't work, so it's not like you're going to break things if you type it wrong, but just try and get it right. Open recovery, dash twrp, dash 2.6.3.2, dash g2, in my case vzw, because I'm on Verizon, dot img. Okay, so let's just look over that, executing Loki Flash, telling it to flash a recovery, and then pointing it to the actual recovery image that we want to flash. Hit enter, Loki Flash version 2.0, Loki validation passed, so it did a little check on the file, flashing image, Loki flashing complete, so now it's done. Cool, so now all we have to do is reboot our phone to get into recovery. Um, I can't remember if I mentioned this already or not, but you don't want to reboot. Um, technically, there's a hardware key combination that you don't want to use because it's dangerous currently. Uh, that would be down in power, uh, sort of cycling those as you're booting. It's a bit of an annoying process anyway. Uh, but what you actually want to use is either A, get a uh, an app on the market that's just called Quick Boot. Uh, it'll let you just have a one-click button on the phone itself to reboot into recovery. Or uh, if you're inside of ADB, yeah, you can type ADB Reboot Recovery, which is what we're going to do. First, we have to exit out of the shell that we're still in, so type in exit. Okay, that exited out of the super user mode. 
We type exit again, and now we're back at the Windows command prompt. Cool. And now we just have to type in ADB reboot recovery. And our phone will reboot here. Show the LG logo, and there you go. There's the Team Win Recovery Project splash screen. Which seems to be taking longer than usual. Okay, there we go. Cool. And now in this, you can go ahead and do a wipe. You can you know, do a backup, uh, what have you. So, cool. Uh, now, just take note, anything you do in here is going to take freaking forever because the LG ROM is way huge. It's like 2 point something gigs. Uh, so anytime you wipe or flash a new ROM, it takes a long time, like up to 10 minutes. So just be patient. Uh, so anyway, let, we're done doing whatever we want to do. Let's go ahead and reboot system. And we'll get back in. So that's how you uh, flash Team One Recovery Project. Like I said, if you see an OTA update after you've installed this, don't install it yet. You're going to want to talk to some people on the forum and get your custom recovery off of there first before you do an update, or just you know be on a custom ROM and never deal with uh, Verizon pushing updates again. So there you go. Hope you guys like this. If you do have questions, uh, I guess please come into the uh, LG G2 IRC chat here on a free node that's going to be the best place to get your help that or of course post on the forums so all right hope this has been helpful for you guys see you later